Hello everyone and welcome to a really interesting game that took place in the Women's Grand Prix uh, that finished yesterday uh, in Monaco. It's Alexandra Kostenyuk versus Elizabeth Pites and it's, uh, well, it's, it's a very uh, fierce attacking game. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, it's a classical time control, 90 minutes for the first 40 moves and then of course you gain additional time and no draws are allowed before move 30. So without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, uh, Kostenyuk already lost two games, but if she manages a win in the final Final round. This is a game from the final round. She will, uh, perha perhaps, it will be enough to uh, claim first place in the uh, women's Grand Prix. So this is the second part of the women's Grand Prix. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, second leg of the four-legged tournament, and it will take part uh, in 2019 and 2020. And uh, similar to the uh, Grand Prix that the men are playing, uh, you will also be awarded two spots in the 2021 uh, women's candidates tournament. So without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Kostenyuk opens with uh, e4. Uh, we have c6, the Karl Kahn defense, knight c3 and d5, striking in the center. Knight f3, uh, in inviting d4, uh, but d captures an e4 instead. Uh, knight captures and now knight to f6. Uh, we have knight captures, pawn captures. It's a very common theme to double your pawns like this. In the Karl Kahn, we have d4 and bishop to d6. Uh, bishop to e3, just continuing development, uh, Pyatt's castles, and queen to d2. Uh, we have bishop to e6, and now bishop to d3. Uh, now white can castle queenside, but also kingside, depending on what black will do. Uh, and here, there are a few games that reach this exact same position uh, in the database. Knight to d7 is a known move, rook e8 is a known move, queen to c7 is a known move, but knight to a6... Uh, is a new move in the position and it is already as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So the point is, like in many openings, you you are uh, welcome to, to grab the knight here and mess up black's pawn structure, but it's not really a problem. Black keeps the bishop pair, he has the semi-open file for his rook, which could very easily be transferred over to the king side if white castles king side. And uh, white doesn't really gain anything by it. This, this is really not uh, that, that big of a deal. And uh, Kostenyuk really needs a win in the final round. So instead we have a3, taking away b4 and c5 from the black knight from a6. We have uh, b5 now and b3, preparing c4. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometime in the future, we have queen to e7, developing the queen, connecting rooks, also putting pressure on the a3 pawn here, uh, and b white just castles here. Uh, we have knight back to c7, and here comes c4, and it is already as of this moment uh, that I really started enjoying the game. So the a3 pawn is gambited. We have uh, bishop captures on a3, uh, but not really, because queen to c2 now uh, puts pressure, uh, well, puts uh, the queen on the same file as the knight here, so the idea is pawn captures here, but also the h7 pawn is threatened. So here black uh, defends against bishop captures on h7, but now c captures on b5. Of course, if you capture uh, with the b pawn, for example, pawn captures here, you're just going to play a rook captures on a3. And then after the queen captures the rook, you're going to pick up the knight. And you will grab two pieces for a rook, which is, of course, uh, great. So instead, we have knight captures and now queen captures on c6, winning back the pawn. Uh, we have a6, adding uh, more uh, defenders to the knight here, and now knight to d2. The knight here uh, will now, uh, well, the knight will either come to e4 from where the knight can pressure f6, or uh, the other idea is to get the knight to c4 to put more pressure on the bishop here, but also you can transfer it to b6, then to d5, and then to f6. So uh, that's, that's basically the idea behind knight to d2. Uh, and now, while you could go rook f to c8, uh, here we have bishop back to d7, pushing the queen back this way, also adds more protection to the knight. We have queen back to f3, and now bishop to b4, with idea of bishop to c3, uh, with a double attack on the rook and on the d4 pawn. Here, uh, we have not knight to e4. If knight to e4, you can kick it away with f, uh, f5, so the queen will no longer be attacking f6, but we have knight to c4 instead. Here, Elizabeth goes bishop to c3, puts pressure on the rook and on the d4 pawn, but now knight to b6. Uh, it's actually not an attack on the rook, it's actually an attack on the f6 pawn. The, the real threat is knight d5, which will come with a double attack on the queen and on the f6 pawn. Bishop captures on a1, and now rook captures on a1. It's important to capture a bishop. Uh, knight d5 is, is uh, a bit too fast for white, because after queen d6, uh, yes, you can now capture on f6 with check, king to g7, and now you will capture on a1, 
but now black has knight captures on d4 and this is somewhat better for black. Uh, of course you cannot capture the knight because bishop h6 check and you lose the queen on f6. So it's important to first capture the bishop, rook captures on a1 and now uh, the rook on a8 is still under attack and it's, uh, well, uh, whether you want to, to, to just leave it there hanging or not, it's up to you, but uh, Elizabeth decides that uh, she will not part with the rook. So rook a to d8 and now comes knight to d5, which was the original threat all along with queen to e6 and now knight captures on f6 with check. King g7 and now d5 uh, opening up this diagonal for the bishop, which is very important as black doesn't have a, a dark square bishop, uh, you will not be able to oppose it. Uh, but first you have to get rid of this knight, but uh, getting rid of it will not be uh, that big of a deal. And of course, like we already mentioned, you cannot capture the knight because of bishop h6 check and now you just pick up uh, the queen and a mate is very soon to follow. Uh, with uh, ideas like that. So after d5 we have queen to e5 getting out of the attack and now comes rook captures on a6 adding the rook to the attack also adding more defense to the knight on f6. We have knight to d4 by black and here uh, Kostenyuk played a, a really interesting move. <laughs> she played knight to h5 check which really uh, busts open uh, the defenses of the black king but uh, I will just show a, a disgusting engine line uh, just because it's beautiful and uh, it's, it's a really forcing line. So uh, queen to g3 and uh, it seems like white wins this. Point is that after queen captures on g3 and h captures let's say knight captures on b3, your knight is under attack, uh, you will now play bishop to c4. Now your plan is to get rid of the knight which defends the d4 square. So knight a5, you're hoping to get rook capture so you can get rid of the knight here, but uh, of course white, white is not interested, just bishop to a2. Next you're gonna go bishop to d4, so white will still try to harass you, bishop to uh, c8 going after the rook, rook to b6, and now there is nothing more you can do to prevent bishop to d4, so you're just gonna make some room for the king. Bishop to d4 now, putting the bishop on this uh, diagonal and now threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries. Uh, unpinning with king to h6, and now bishop to c3. Uh, just uh, uh, threatening to win the knight and after knight to b7 now you get bishop to b4 taking away all the squares from this rook rook to h8 and now d6 and black is without a move so it's just uh, th that's why i wanted to show this line it's it's just uh, you know a disgusting engine line but it's also beautiful the knight has no squares you cannot move the knight uh, the bishop cannot move because you have to keep an eye on the knight. This rook has no squares, this rook has no squares, you can play some silly moves with the king, but that's pretty much it. It's not, not going to be very useful. Uh, <laughs> d7 is coming, you will not be able to capture because you're, well, the bishop is stuck guarding the knight here, so it's a completely winning position for white. But uh, it's, uh, it requires uh, a lot of calculation and uh, Elizabeth is very low on time, so I'm sure uh, that was taken into account when uh, Kostenik played knight to h5 with check. So it's a really interesting move. A point of it is that if queen captures, then it's just queen to f6 check. And here black is just lost. King g8, bishop captures on d4, and there's no way to prevent either queen g7 mate or queen to h8 mate. Well, there is, but you have to give up the queen with queen d1 check, bishop f1, and now queen captures here, but the playing this position would be pointless. So uh, the correct move after knight to h5 check is actually g captures on h5. But again, with uh, being so very low on time, it's hard to to open up your king like this when the, the bishop pair is slicing over to the black king, the rook is uh, can join the attack very easily, but here uh, you don't really have a way of continuing the attack with white, so this, this would have been the best idea for black, because you don't have like bishop captures, queen captures, and queen something like this to win the game, because the bishop covers the f5 square, so something like that, it's not possible, bishop h6 check does nothing, you just move the king, and well, your down material, grabbing material will not help you and the black already has threats uh, of her own. So here after G, G captures on h5, you would have to go again into queen g3 check, queen captures on g3, uh, first uh, a nice vision suk, bishop captures on d4, king to g8 and now h captures on g3. And uh, again, uh, it's very hard to, <laughs> to go for this if you don't find bishop to b5, this sneaky move all the way uh, from that move where white sacrificed the knight. Because now after bishop captures, you have rook captures, you pick up the passed pawn and now you will also pick up one of the bishops, let's say this captures, uh, captures here and you will put a rook in front of the passed pawn and of course black is even better here. 
uh, but uh, you know that's uh, a lot of calculation for uh, uh, for when you're very low on time and if you don't find the sneaky bishop to b5 idea you will not play uh, captors knight so here elizabeth played the king back to g8 but now comes queen to f6 check and here you're really uh, you know uh, running running uh, low on ideas uh, the threat is just queen captures queen there's no other way around it so here if you capture the queen then you get knight captures with check king g7 and just bishop captures on d4 and that's just it you don't really have a good, good move if you move the king g4 is coming and uh, that's that's just it uh, h4 g5 is coming the, or, or just g5 the king cannot capture because knight captures on h7 with check you pick up the rook on f8 uh, that's is just uh, unplayable, uh, and also you're down a piece. You know, just uh, just to mention that as well. So after queen to f6, uh, Elizabeth played rook f to e8, but now just queen captures on e5, rook captures on e5, and again knight to f6 with check. King g7, and now knight captures on d7. Well, the point being that if rook captures on d7, rook cap uh, bishop captures on d4, winning more material. So it would just be unplayable. So after knight captures on d7, uh, Elizabeth tried rook captures on d5. But now it's knight back to f6. Uh, the f6 square is nicely protected. And also you c this comes with an attack on the rook. So here we have knight to f3 check. Opening up an attack towards the bishop. Captures, captures. And now uh, just rook to b6. Defending the pass pawn. And here you have uh, two pieces for a rook. Of course, this is completely winning for white. It's only a ma matter of technique, and uh, uh, Costanio has the, both the technique and the time to get this through. So we have h6, now comes h4, uh, rook to d1 check, just king g2, rook to b1, putting the rook behind the pass pawn, and now f4, not allowing any g5 ideas. We have rook to d3. Uh, and just b4, starting to push the pass pawn, rook to b2, threatening rook captures bishop as the f pawn is pinned, but just king f3. We have rook d to b3, now threatening to capture the uh, on b4, but just knight to d5. So there's really not all that much for black to do here. We have f5, and now rook to b7 check. We have king to f8, and now king back to g2, now the bishop can also move. Uh, we have rook to c2, and here uh, Kostanyuk just played b5, and it was in this position that uh, that uh, Elizabeth Pites resigned the game, as there is really nothing more to do here. It will be very easy to advance the past pawn, and well, it's, the white is just up too much material in, in much better position. And with the dark square bishop guarding the f2 pawn, the two rooks are completely useless. So Kostenyuk won this game and with a win in the final round, uh, she wins the FIDE Grand Prix. Uh, here I prepared the standings here, let me just check if I, ha yeah, they're here, let me just fix that a bit. Uh, so there we have it, uh, first place, uh, well it's, it's a shared first place really, but uh, a better, uh, better additional criteria. Uh, it's Alexandra Kostenyuk in first place, Hampi Koneri second and Alexandra Goryachkina in third. Uh, th uh, all of them uh, seven points, followed by Katarina Lagno, Anna Muzichuk, uh, uh, Dron Dronavali Harika, Pia Kramling, Maria Muzichuk, uh, Shu Zhao, uh, Shu Zhao uh, Nana Zagnice, uh, Elizabeth Pais, and Valentina Gunina. Valentina Gunina in last place with two out of 11 points, but she did get a very nice win with the white pieces against the winner, Alexandra Kostenyuk. So there we have it. That's it, and we do have a photo uh, of all the winners here. Let me just uh, let me just check where where I have it. Uh, just a second there. Uh, let me just look for it on my other screen. -na -na -na. Hmm. Sure, I have it somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. I, I, I was completely sure I, I prepared it. Okay, but let me just check for a few more seconds. Nope, it's not here. It's not here, uh, but... Uh, but I will put a link in the description below. The first thing you will see will be a nice photo of the, of the uh, first, second and third place. Uh, so, so you can check that out as well. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Rohan Polidano, Matt Beckwith, uh, 
uh, Scott Incel, uh, Sig GmbH, and Rohan Banchali for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing uh, with the coverage of the FIDE Grand Prix, continuing to check upon your wonderful suggestions, and of course, whatever else happens in the chess world. And of course, don't forget to be a part of the subscribers video 2020. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.